So, Bi County was established in 1974 as an interlocal agreement. Uh, we are governed by a board of directors uh, representing Montgomery and Stewart counties. Uh, we are foundational to the development of the municipal solid waste region uh, in uh, planning region in November of 1992, representing uh, Montgomery, Stewart, and Robertson. We're known as the SMR region. Uh, we have two locations. We have our uh, main landfill located at 3212 Dover Road. That has a CND site and a class uh, one site, which is where all of your uh, basic household waste and uh, recyclable items come to. Uh, and then we also have our Guthrie Road site, which is a class three or uh, demolition site. This is a map of the, or overview map of the site. Dover Road location consists of over 500 acres. Uh, 70 are utilized and 35, in, uh, 35 are in permitting. Uh, at cur and we have space in the, we've, we've been in the paper that we're running out of space and things like that. We have the space, we have the land. It's permitted space that we're limited on. You can't just go out and put uh, trash into the landfill. You have to have that permitted through TDEC. So that's where we're constrained a little bit, but we have permitting uh, process. Uh, we just received another uh, permit just recently. So that is giving us breathing room. So at our current rates, we have about 18 months of class one airspace available and about six years of class three airspace available at the Dover Road site. Uh, expansion will provide an additional six to eight years of class one airspace and at current rates approximately eight years of class three airspace at the Guthrie Highway site. Currently uh, we take in about 600 tons of class one trash that's municipal solid waste your household trash your business trash that's what we consider class one uh, so we take in about 600 tons of that daily and approximately 2,000 cubic yards of class three daily, and that's between the two sites. Uh, annual revenues range from 12 to 15 million. Uh, sources of revenues come from the tipping fees, which are paid by commercial haulers. So the hauler that you pay to bring your trash into us, they pay a tipping fee to us to dispose of that trash. Uh, user fees, all residents of Montgomery and Stewart County through resolution are required to pay the $5 per month user fee. And then um, our recycling, the recycling efforts that you do, the recycling efforts that the schools uh, take part in and uh, individuals, uh, those recycles come into us. We bail those. We have a, mar a person on staff that makes sure that the mark he watches the markets and then once uh, the markets are where they need to be and we have enough for a load to go out, then he sends those out. And those recycle revenues go back into our operating budget as well. And then we have gas to energy on site that produces revenues as well. <clears throat> our operations, we currently have uh, 104 employees. Uh, that includes part-time and full-time. And the part-time employees are established at the convenience centers where you as a private individual take your recycles and drop those off located throughout the counties. Uh, and then the rest of those are at our, or the uh, full-time employees are at our main sites at the two different locations. We have functional managers on site. Uh, we have our operations manager who uh, oversees uh, the, the field work. Uh, we have the administration and education, which is me. Uh, we have a compliance, safety, and training person on staff, uh, recycling and rural collection and convenience centers. When you throw trash away, it pretty, and it, like a lovely day uh, this weekend when we had so much rain, that rain filters through the trash and it becomes leachate. And leachate is a liquid, it's dirty garbage water, and that is what we have to work with. So years ago, our engineers that we had at the time, 
they recommended that we put in a leachate lagoon system. And so this is the photo that you see, uh, the two photos that you see here. Uh, the top one, the smaller pond that looks like it has the white foam on top, that's our treatment pond. It's a one and a half million gallon pond and the leachate is introduced. We pull it off by trailer uh, tanker loads and the tankers bring it back. They introduce it into that pond and it takes about 30 days for it to process through. They uh, introduce it into the very far end and then it's baffled off into about four or five different sections. And then once it gets down within 30 days, it gets down to the, uh, this end down this direction. Uh, that's when it's fully uh, processed and treated. Uh, we put bugs in there, microorganisms, and areas that you see that actually have the foam on top and they're churning, uh, that's where we're adding the bugs and we're uh, putting oxygen into it. We're moving it around. And that's where the bugs, they get in there and you know they're eating. And I, I tell the children when they come out for the school trips that it's like putting them in a candy store and saying you can eat anything that you want to. Those bugs love that leachate and they help clean it up. Uh, the section that you see there, uh, one back from this end, that's a non-oxygenated area. So we're not moving it. It's just sitting there and that's where the bugs really get in there and eat. And then in the background, the large pond that you see, after it's gone through the 30 day processing, it's pumped over into the large pond, which is a seven and a half million gallon pond. And that's where we'll hold it until we haul it to the wastewater treatment plant for further processing. As your trash decomposes, it produces methane gas. And with our methane gas, as I mentioned before, one of our revenues is a uh, gas to energy program. And so as that gas or as the trash decomposes and it produces that methane gas, it's pulled by vacuum system over to this plant here. We have two engines on site. And if you ever drive by the landfill at night or late afternoon, you may see a big flame burning. If that flame is burning, it means that either one of the engines is down or we've got excess gas and they're flaring it off. But that, uh, the gas, methane is a very wet uh, gas and so they have to put it through a very special process. And in that uh, far picture, it goes through kind of a dehumidifying process and then eventually through all of the processes, it will uh, be turned into energy through those uh, two uh, engines that we have. And then it goes back over to the TVA grid. And we produce enough electricity to run about 3,000 homes. Do I need to stop? Okay. Recycling and convenience centers, I've mentioned those. And that's where you as a private individual would take your uh, trash and your recycle items to drop those off. You do have the option here in Montgomery County if you want curbside service that you would have to contract that through a private hauler and pay for that separately uh, in addition to your user fee. But we do provide convenience centers located throughout Montgomery and Stewart counties. We have 17 convenience centers and then we have our transfer station, that, which is right over here off of Highway Drive. And uh, we have a convenience center on the back side of it and then the transfer station pit area where you can throw larger items. For that $5, you could actually clean out your entire house and bring it to us for nothing more than that $5. Uh, Freon appliances, many people don't realize, but when your, uh, your refrigerator or maybe an air conditioner or something like that goes down, you can't just dispose of that. It may still have some Freon in it, and we have a person on site that takes that Freon out and recycles it. So, um, as I was saying, that $5 user fee also includes that. All of our services that we offer is included with that. So um, we provide a class one disposal for residents as well as uh, segregate, segregated gathering of recycled materials. 
uh, cardboard, paper, glass, number one and number two plastics. As I heard uh, Phil say in the back, with a neck that a cap will screw onto, uh, you can throw the cap away, you can leave the ring on it, uh, you can leave the plastic wrapper on it as well. Uh, white goods and metals. And our goal to, is to exceed the 2025 standards set out by TDEC of 25% recyclable materials and keep waste out of the landfill and regenerate. Some of the things that we recycle or that we um, keep out of the landfill are wood waste. Our wood waste, we have a grinder that we turn it into mulch. So we can't take treated wood, that would go over into our demolition site but any clean, untreated wood comes right over to our uh, grinder and it's turned into mulch. Uh, and we used to sell it as an alternative fuel. Now we're actually using it uh, some on the slopes that we have out at the landfill. Tires are turned into fuel and other products. Tires are a real problem waste for people in the solid waste business. One, they always remember they want to be round so we can't put them in the landfill hole and we really don't want to put them in the landfill because that takes up uh, expensive space but we have a trailer and tires are dropped off and then we send those off to a company that will chip those up uh, they can pull the steel braiding out uh, and if they do that then they can make rubber tire mulch and if you look around the courthouse the montgomery county courthouse you'll find rubber tire mulch in their beds. Uh, if they don't do that, then they can use it as what they call a TDF or tire derived fuel in the electricity making process. Very much like our TVA plant, they use, um, I've not been told that they use tires, they use 100% coal, but there are some plants like that that will add the tires back in it. And the tires actually burn cleaner and hotter than coal. Uh, other recycles that we accept are the glass, colored and clear, and uh, it's used to make new glass. Uh, they can add it to pavement, and we can also share it with uh, Mr. Haynes out at the tile plant where it's used uh, to put back into their slurry mix. Can, aluminum cans, uh, we Except mixed cans, aluminum, tin, and steel, we don't ask you to separate those. All we ask is that you rinse those out. You can leave the labels on the uh, metal cans, and then we have a machine at the landfill that will separate those out. We like to do that because sometimes the market for the metal is higher than the aluminum and things like that. So we do separate those out. But an aluminum can, if you recycled it today, it would take approximately 30 days for it to be back out on the shelf. So if you recycled it today and it left that recycle container and went straight to a recycler or uh, to a reprocessing plant, it could take 30 days for it to be right back out on the shelf. Cardboard. As long as the cardboard does not have a wax coating like some of your freezer boxes, we can accept it for recycling. Uh, break it down. If there's packing in it, packing paper or styrofoam, pull that out. Unfortunately, the styrofoam does have to go in the trash. We don't have the capacity to recycle that uh, styrofoam. Uh, and then we recycle that and send it out for uh, processing. And then plastics, as I said, number one and number two. There are seven different types of plastic. And the way that you can tell which plastic you're looking at is by turning it upside down, looking for the recycle symbol on the bottom. If it has a number one or a number two inside of that recycle symbol, and it has a neck that a cap will screw onto, or in some cases your milk jugs will have just a pop top on it, then it can be recycled. Some of your um, uh, shampoo bottles, that extra top at the top, if you can just pull that off, there's a neck underneath that. E-waste, computers, appliances, and uh, those, those are also recycled. We can only accept those at the main landfill, though. They have to come out to the Dover Road site. And uh, we send those off 
to be recycled and to, for the, met, the uh, precious metals in those to be reclaimed. And then paint, water-based latex paint. We um, can actually reuse that at the landfill for various projects. Uh, part of it would go into our alternate daily cover. Uh, at times we have to spray what we call an ADC or an alternate daily cover on the landfill to help repel uh, water and things like that and as a cover and we can put that latex paint in there. Uh, we also, if you don't want to bring it out to the main landfill, when we have our household hazardous waste collection events, which we have those scheduled for March 17th and September 15th, and then if you miss the two in Montgomery County on those two dates, June, I think it's June 2nd in Stewart County, you can also bring the paint if you've got more than you want to take out to the landfill or if you just got one can and it's more convenient for you to come over to the highway drive site. You can do that on those dates. Um, in the schools and at the convenience centers on a personal level, white paper and newspaper can be mixed. That's fine. In the office setting, we like to try to keep the office paper separate from the newspaper because the market, uh, every time that you recycle paper, the fibers get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until finally you have tissue and it cannot be recycled. So clearly, if you have a finer quality of paper, what we call office paper or white paper, the market uh, has a better value for that and um, then then the value for the newspaper. So in the office setting or in the school setting, we try to keep those two separated. And then batteries. Uh, batteries, we collect these at the uh, main landfill. We can take the rechargeable batteries, the lithium uh, button batteries, nickel, cadmium, uh, cell phones are accepted for recycling as well, uh, but your standard alkaline batteries, your AA, AAAs, those can just go into the regular trash stream. They have been um, rendered non-hazardous and can be thrown away. And then for bulbs, for fluorescent tubes or compact fluorescents, uh, you can recycle those at the main landfill. We do charge, for businesses, we do charge a dollar per bulb for those, and we have a machine that will uh, capture the mercury that's in those. Or if you've just got a few that, uh, from the home, you can also take those to Lowe's. They have a container up front where they can accept those. Or if it's just one, I'm gonna say this, but. Remember you're doing film. Yes. <laughs> Uh, as I said, you can bring those to the landfill or you can take those to Lowe's. <laughs> Thank you. And Freon appliances, as I mentioned, even when your Freon appliances go out, uh, whether if it's a refrigerator or, uh, or an air conditioner or something of that nature, a uh, dehumidifier that has a Freon, that contains Freon, those can be brought out to the landfill and disposed of. And then all of our scrap metal, uh, we collect all of that and send it back out. So after our person uh, takes that Freon out and processes that, then that refrigerator then goes into the scrap metal as white goods. So some of our targets at Bi-County, our 50 meter target is to establish regional product control, determine proper governance, uh, user fee program, and improve financial efficiency. A 100 meter target would be to establish five to 10 years of future airspace, uh, strategic compliance work, operational adjustments, refine maintenance operations, and improve financial efficiency. A 200 meter target would be to uh, control leachate management, uh, closure capping and post-closure cost, and uh, obtain gold platinum certification. A 300 meter target would be uh, for our rural collection department, uh, provide mandatory recycling capabilities and renewable energy projects. Questions? I do have a question. 
Okay. Uh, do y'all work uh, with clean food on their recycling? Do they bring the things to you or is it a separate? They are a private company and they process that on their own. Okay. Question? Okay. The market that we send ours off to, uh, they, Nashville did a, a program where they tried some curbside pickup uh, and then to, in order for us to pick up more recycles and to have things, we would have to have a MRF, which is a material recovery facility, which would require more um, space. It would require more uh, personnel. They are. They, they accept more of the plastics than we do. And a lot of it is the market that they're sending out to. And uh, the market that we send out to, I don't, know that they, I don't know that they're getting paid for their recycles where we are. And so the market that we send to that buys from us, they want the number one and number two plastics. My other question was about the, the possibility of the gasification. Mm -hmm. That is continually being discussed as a, as a as a possibility in the future. As as I mentioned in the first part, we 